afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I am Chesco Cordero from Insightful Accountant and your host for today. Now, before we actually start, as you guys know, I like to go into the question of the day, just as everybody's kind of coming in, settling down in front of your computers, your phones, or your tablets. So for those actually already with us in the room, you can be, uh, feel free to answer. Okay, so the question of the day is, this is kind of funny because we were kind of talking a while ago, a little bit of nostalgia. So my question of the day is, if a cassette or a disc would have gotten stuck in your car's player and it was stuck in a loop, what song do you think would be playing? Oh, my goodness. We didn't warn Michelle about the question of the day. Yeah. So she's totally <laughs> unprepared. So I'm going to I'm going to answer this. But it's even funnier that you asked because my brother just sent me this meme the other day. Um, mine would have 100 percent been like a Nelly CD. <laughs> <laughs> So I just showed my age, but um, yeah, it would have definitely been like Nelly on loop. <laughs> Michelle. I, I can probably beat you a little bit because <laughs> thinking back, my first actual compact disc that I owned uh, was Salt and Peppa. Oh, if you remember. Yes. Oh yeah. And I remember very, very clearly. So I probably just aged myself a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that was my first album. And yeah. my first CD was Alanis <laughs> Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. I loved her too. Oh, you have to, you have to. So anyways, we digress. <laughs> yeah. I answered this um, a few times too. And I said, I, pro I said probably TLC, but yes, yeah. <laughs> but I think the first uh, cassette that I actually owned was a, one of my favorites. It was side A was uh, Brittany and side B was Christina. That was my favorite thing ever. Gotta love and it. I think that would have gotten stuck. Okay. Anyway, just to continue, good good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Again, I am Chesco Cordero from Insightful Accountant and your host for today. Now, in today's tax talks, We'll be talking about supporting burnout for an HR perspective with the lovely Christine Gervais, along with Michelle LeBlanc. Now, I'll hand this off to them in just a little bit after I cover a few of the housekeeping items. Now, there is no CPE for this, as it is just a 30-minute webinar. If you have any questions, please remember to put them in the Q&A panel and be specific. You can't just say what you mean. You got to ask, hey, Christine, what you mean by your first CD with Alanis Morissette? mainly because you might not get to your question right after you put it in there. Now, we will be sending you a copy of the slide deck and a link to the recording after the webinar. And it's also going to be up on our YouTube channel within about 24 hours. So if you want to go check that out over there, along with many other webinars that we've done in the past that might be of interest to you. I'll be putting that link to our YouTube channel into our chat as well. Now, do not forget that we have many webinars for you every month, whether you're interested in practice management, marketing, everything tax like this, or all things QuickBooks, Insightful Accountants, got something for you. Now, you can check out all of our webinars that are available to you over on the educational webinars page on our site, and I'll also be putting that link into our chat as well. Now, speaking of webinars, mark your calendars for Insightful Accountants Future Forward Integration and Workflows on May 21 to 22 where you can also catch Christine's session on day one, right? Yes. <laughs> now yes. get ready for eight exciting webinars over two days, which, which each el is eligible for a CPE certificate. Now don't, this, don't miss this opportunity to enhance your skills and stay ahead in the industry so you guys register. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, join the tens of thousands of accounting professionals who rely on Insightful Accountant to keep them up to date on the news and updates impacting today's accounting professional. I'll be rolling out all those links for you, so many links, and the copy of the slide deck throughout the webinar in case you might have missed it the first time I put it up there. So watch out for that in the chat. And Christine and Michelle, thanks. That's it for me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. I missed everyone. We switched the tax talks to every other month now. So we're excited to be back. Um, and I'm very, very excited to have Michelle here today. So before we dig in, I'm going to do the hardest part of all of these, which is always for me to get the technology up and running. So share my screen, start the slide deck, and I will keep the Q&A and the chat box 
open over here while we are chatting. So if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to pop them in either the chat or the Q&A and I'll kind of keep an eye on it while Michelle and I are talking. So we are talking about supporting burnout from an HR perspective today. Absolutely none of us are burnt out just less than a week after <laughs> the filing deadline. Um, we probably needed to have this session back in January, but that's okay. It's a great time for us to talk about with all of this burnout kind of fresh in our minds, what are some things that we can start to put into practice within our firms going forward to not just support us, but to support our team members and help uh, really make sure that we are all successful long term. So if you are not subscribed, go ahead and scan the QR code right there. Make sure that you're not missing our newsletter. Thank you, Cheska. Just popped the slide deck also into the chat. If you want to go grab that while we're chatting. Um, for those of you who haven't joined us before, let me see if I can get this to hide. There we go. Um, my name is Christine Gervais. I am the co-founder of Cultivate Consulting. I have been a CPA for almost 15 years, been running my own practice for almost 10, and just coming to you, uh, you know, with that experience of running a small practice and all of the fun benefits and challenges that come along with it. And I will let Michelle introduce herself, but not before I tell you guys that Michelle is amazing at what she does. All of our clients love her, and the way they describe her is always, we wish we had hired her forever ago. She's so fantastic. So I will let you tell um, them a little bit more about yourself and what it is that you do and, and why you're here to support all of us hired accounts today. <laughs> Well, Christine, I appreciate definitely that introduction um, and looking forward to our chat today. My name is Michelle LeBlanc. Um, I have been an HR professional for over 15 years, my entire career spent um, in all sorts of different size companies, different size industries, the last few years um, made the decision to really want to be very intentional about who I get to work with, the types of projects that I get to work on. Um, and so I founded my own consulting firm and have been doing independent consulting, um, supporting really small businesses, founders, um, solopreneurs, and you know, really just trying to help guide and advise them um, within their business from an HR perspective, because we know that it's something that people kind of tend to think about after the fact sometimes. And um, I come in and I, I try to have a very uh, personal approach, tailored approach and very common sense approach, if you will. Um, so really partnering with businesses and leaders is re really where I stride um, or find my strides. So yeah, I'm super excited to be talking to all the finance folks who are definitely not burnt out after <laughs> what was it, two, two days, I think after the deadline, three days. Yeah. Yes, it's we're in a we're in our recovery period still. Um, and don't worry, we do have Michelle's contact information at the end of the slide deck. So if you want to contact her after the session today, uh, we will certainly make sure that her contact information is available to to you. So um, talking about burnout uh, and Michelle, you've worked with us, so you certainly are no stranger to our accounting lifestyle and tax season and all of those things. Um, I just wrote an article actually for Tax Practice News a couple of weeks ago on the crisis state of the accounting industry that we are just experiencing this sort of unprecedented unprecedented, you know, it's been going on for a long time where enrollments into accounting and colleges have gone down, the number of people taking the CPA exam have gone down, we're just starting to really feel some very serious effects of staffing shortages. Um, it, there's still very long hours, we are not always the healthiest humans, we're sitting at our desks for very long periods of time. And we're doing, you know, for all intensive purposes, very high stress work. So that's not a recipe for super, super healthy individuals. Um, and do you want to maybe just speak to that for a second from the HR perspective of like, what are some of the things that you find shows up in culture and in businesses when you have this kind of high burnout state for people? Sure. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's it's by any means, uh, you know, just in the finance industry, just in the accounting world. But as you said, when you're dealing with people's money, that's one of the things that is going to get people's emotions so incredibly high. And so that just makes 
everything that much more intense if something were to go wrong or if there were to be an issue. And we see that with, like you mentioned, long hours, um, especially when we're talking about people who are maybe working remotely um, or in the accounting world, right, up against these crazy deadlines that when you're talking about things like the IRS, people get really scared and they should because they don't understand it. Um, but I think the the big thing that is important for this conversation is to be able to really recognize what those signs are and what's the difference between, okay, you're having a little bit of a challenging day or a challenging client, didn't get enough sleep. There's all those things that daily we all go through versus what does that burnout look like? Are you having trouble wanting to even engage in your work anymore? You know, is, and I think a lot of that is, is what people kind of struggle with too is, okay, well, you know, it's not always fun. It's not, you're not always super passionate, but how long does that last? Right. Um, yeah. That's a really, really great point is how long does that last? And um, I mean, I think that what we'll talk about today and how to address that helps um, create an environment for all of those things, whether it's, you know, how to manage short-term stress, but really we want to try to give all of you some tools today about how to build things into the actual operations of your business and specifically your firm culture that really supports you and your team with that heavier burnout, like what to do when, when there isn't really feeling like there's light at the tunnel mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, so I'll let you talk about Michelle, because, you know, this is kind of your baby in terms of where do we start? And I think the default, a lot of the times, at least the old school mentality was you just default with offering people more money, right? Like who doesn't yep. love a raise, but that's really not what we're seeing is the answer. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, and, and I think that's really, you know, I work with a lot of founders. I work with a lot of, you know, really small business leaders and uh, kind of folks, like I said, solopreneurs. And where we miss the ball a lot is not really engaging to figure out what it is that our teams want. Um, you know, if you follow anybody on LinkedIn, you probably see things like, oh, nobody wants the pizza parties anymore, um, you know, at the office kind of thing. And we can throw money at folks, but at the end of the day, if you're not getting exactly what you need from that company or from that leader, it's it's not going to be beneficial whatsoever. So my recommendation is always ask a question, you know, whether you're a team of two or a team of 30, you need to ask the question of your team members, like, how, do a check-in. How are you doing? You know, how what's your temperature today? Like, what what is it that's on your plate that's stressing you out or that we can support you in? And a really easy way to do that, again, it really depends on the size and nature of the business, but you can have a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. There's also a lot of very simple feedback tools that you can use. You can get free surveys online. You could make three different questions, send it out to your team, and you could get some really meaningful feedback. So maybe money is a motivator for some people, but there's a lot of other creative things that businesses can do at a very low cost that I look at as like low-hanging fruit to help support those employees. Um, but you're not going to figure out what it is that they want unless you're asking those questions. 100% agree. And we are going to talk about some of those cost-effective strategies and things that you can implement. But I, I couldn't agree with this more. Just from a personal standpoint, I look back at like the history of my career and how many times I was maybe offered, you know, another position or more money or things like that. But those rarely came with any type of question you know, geared towards me of like, what is it that you need from us? Like, do you actually want a raise or would you prefer that our health insurance was better for your family or that you got more yep. days off? Or maybe we did a, um, you know, flex Friday schedule during the summer for people to rotate some extra days off with their kids. Like there wasn't a lot of that back and forth conversation happening to actually, and there were a lot of times at various points in my life where other benefits besides just an increased paycheck would have been more meaningful to me. Sure. And I totally think that you hit it 
um, so well here too, because it's more than just asking them, Hey, what would make you, what would make you feel better? Like, what can I give you that would make you feel better? But also identifying the sources of stress because we're sort of assuming it's just high volume of work and deadlines, but maybe it's a particular client, you know, maybe someone's having a really difficult people person problem. Or maybe it's that they feel they have a project that they're really struggling with and they feel really unsupported in terms of like their mentorship resources or getting help with something that they're trying to work on. And we just don't know the answers to those questions without asking. And I I can tell you personally, I've had so many employers, like I said, just throw something at the problem (laughs) that they think is helpful. You and I talked about this the other day, the pizza parties. Um, My, my very first job out of college, like bless their hearts. We loved them at the time. They would buy us lunch every Friday and bagels every Saturday. And we had like free soda in the kitchen and free coffee, you know, but looking back on that, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice gesture, but when I'm already working 80, 90 hours a week, I'm not going to the gym. I'm not going outside. I'm sitting at my desk that whole time adding a whole bunch of pizza and caffeine to that isn't really, it's not enhancing my mental health in any way. It's definitely not enhancing my physical health. So we want to just, you know, really take those things into consideration and think about like, this isn't a temporary fix. We're trying to figure out how do we build things in that are actually going to long-term be the best thing for our team. Oh, absolutely. And it's one of those things where, you know, you have to believe, and and I truly do, that most leaders, most companies, their intentions are very good. They Mm -hmm. they are trying to do something to help alleviate the stresses and, you know, just the, the constraints that the work is putting on their employees. But when we're missing the ball, where we're missing the ball is to your point, it's that personalized attention of, you know, let's take a little bit of extra time to ask exactly what it is that could help them um, versus a blanket solution that, you know, it's not long-term, it it fizzles out. um, Yeah. And and it's not super impactful as something else that maybe uh, would benefit them at that moment could be. Absolutely. Which sort of leads us into our next point that in order for you to assess your resources and determine like what is your budget to to maybe put some things into place, um, you need to know what it is that you're doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) What's the initiative? Yeah. Um, and then we can talk about some of these things, your resources and in, in terms of like, if I'm going to put in, I love that you call them wellness initiatives. If I'm going to put those in place, how much is going to, is that going to cost me? And it really depends on, well, what's the initiative? Yep. Uh, go ahead. Go Sorry. Ahead. <laughs> I was going to ask, do you find with small business owners that cost is a common um, like roadblock when you start talking about putting some of these things into play? Absolutely. I mean, you, you folks on here are the money people. So I, I would say that you're in a better position to answer that, but yeah, absolutely. You know, small businesses, especially whether you're starting out or, you know, you've been running for years, cost is always at top of mind, you know, and I think Mm -hmm. even in large scale businesses, you know, you're trying to be, you know, you're you're trying to be financially savvy in everything that you do. Uh, My space working specifically with small businesses, startups, you know, new leadership, we like to get creative in finding very cost effective ways that can make those meaningful differences. And there's a ton of stuff out there if you take a little bit of time to kind of just do a little bit of research. Um, but yeah, always, always, always cost is a is a factor. We would love to say, hey, everybody take your employees twice a year to, you know, Mexico and yes. hang out on the beach and retreat in Cabo. Leave. A retreat in Cabo, like I will join you a hundred percent, but it's not realistic. Right. And what, what value do you really get out of that? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that I've worked on with different clients um, over the years that I have found really successful. Um, and I know that we're going to kind of go in to talk about a little bit of specific things to give folks just some recommendations and ideas of where they could kind of launch these things from. 
Yes. So I do want to talk about those, but I also, um, I did a little bit of statistic research to kind of lay the foundation for this conversation today. I'm so glad that you said, you know, looking at the value that you're getting back on something because it's not just what is the cost outlay for these initiatives it's what am I gaining back to my organization by by putting them and you have to balance those out so um statistically speaking I was reading uh these were Gallup polls that I was reading yesterday to prepare for this webinar so statistically speaking a happy employee is on average 20 percent more productive than, a, than an unhappy employee. Now, happy is a really blanket statement and that means something different to everybody. But suffice it to say, you know, you putting, say you put a cost a cost initiative in place that is resulting in, um, well, everybody, let's, let's take time off, you know? So let's talk about like a, a, an employee that produces $100,000 a year worth of revenue for the firm. If you give that employee 10% more time off, you're theoretically losing 10% of your revenue production, right? But if that employee is now 20% more productive while they're at work, because they have a better work-life balance, the firm actually gains in that respect. You've actually gained about an 8% margin on more increased revenue production in my theoretical scenario. So I think it's important to understand that. The other statistic that really blew my mind was that it costs a company on average 50% of the annual salary to turn over a position. So if you're paying someone $70,000 a year and you're constantly having to replace that position because they're constantly getting burnt out, it's costing you on average $35,000 every single time you have to turn over that. That's a lot of money that is to a put lot. towards a wellness program to just keep good people in the positions that they're already in. So um, just kind of framing that, uh, let's talk about some of the strategies that you've seen be effective for small businesses in the past. Absolutely. And I love those statistics. I'm glad you pulled them because I've looked at them in the past and I will say, sadly, uh, they are increasing. And I don't, I don't anticipate that that's going to change um, just kind of as the world of work evolves. But there are very, um, I would say, simple strategies that really mean a lot. So something that I love, and I'll, I'll go through these and we can always expand on them, um, but you know, just mindful of time. So mental health days, right? Like there's all this therapy talk in the world today, but I love being able to offer mental health days in addition to any sort of accrued PTO, days off, things like that. My recommendation, a lot of my clients who utilize this strategy, um, they'll offer like one day per quarter. And, you know, hey, Christine, you are you don't even have to tell me what's up, right? You can just yeah. take your day, do whatever it is you want, whether that's vacation, maybe you're at the spa, whatever it is, go for a really long hike. <laughs> um, but just having that ability to recharge and not feel stressed that, oh my gosh, I need to miss work or I need to request mm -hmm. a day off or anything like that. And it, it really, really positively impacts the overall culture, knowing that you're employer is offering that like, Hey, we care enough about you that we're going to give you just this random extra day off to your point. What is the cost versus the, the ROI on it? Right. And it's usually the investment is, is far outweighs somebody not being there for a day. Um, similarly with flexible work schedules, you mentioned this when we first got on the call, right? So whether you're an in-person on site or remote or some sort of flex of both allowing people to have a choice in how they work, I love giving people options, no matter what it is. And 100%. that is something, right? It empowers them to go, wow, they really care about me. So maybe John is working, you know, eight to five, but I personally, I love being able to take my kiddos to school and pick them up every single day. Sometimes that means that I'm working after business hours, if you will, uh, but that's okay. And for me, that works. And a lot of employers will see, again, to your point, it's going to keep employees employees happier, engaged, feeling engaged, like yep. engaged. Um, virtual water cooler chats, most of us are on platforms like Teams, Slack, you know, some sort of chat, instant messaging, you know, platform of some sort. 
in order to keep, especially if you're remote or that flex schedule, you can create channels in those platforms where it's like, hey, I need 15 minutes to decompress. And Christine, are you available? You want to just chat about whatever, right? Let's chat about what our plans are for the summer. There's also platforms out there, um, and I, I can provide them for the, the audience eventually, but um, where you can you can put in some money into these accounts. And so for a virtual water cooler chat, you could, for instance, gift your employees a $10 Starbucks card. They could grab a coffee, come back to their desk and have a oh, conversation. I love that. I love that. Right? And it's encouraging, like, look, take half an hour, like it's fine. And um, again, this is all really, you're going to see the theme of the employer showing that they care. Mm -hmm. And that goes a lot, a long, long way. Um, Personal development allowances, what this really means is, hey, you want to continue your, your CE hours, you know, do it during work time. You don't have to, you know, because again, it's going to benefit the company in the long run, but yes. Hey, I don't want to miss my kiddos baseball game because I'm sitting here doing my CE hours, or this is, there's this really awesome, you know, trade show or convention that I'd like to go to. Um, when you're budgeting, thinking along those lines of how much money you're going to allot to kind of that professional training and development for your employees, again, goes a long way, shows your invested interest in their overall well-being. Yes. Um, Wellness Wednesdays, no meeting Fridays. This doesn't always work and it doesn't always fly super well with my clients, but some people love it. Um, Wellness Wednesdays, like focusing once a month, having some sort of focus. You could do lunch and learns. You could do like virtual yoga classes. Um, there's all sorts of fun, creative stuff you can do. The no meeting Fridays, I've actually, I got this from a client and they do it because it allows people to really catch up on all the stuff that you didn't get done. Yes. We've done no meeting Fridays for years. It's my favorite thing because that's exactly what it is. It's like the week has been so full of very quickly moving parts. I need a day where I'm not interrupted by a meeting, a phone call. I even give myself permission to stay out of my inbox for a good part of yeah. the day. Um, and we're also actually implementing no workday Fridays for the summer. So for the months of, you know, and a lot of our, our, our staff does actually work on a flexible work schedule. So it's their choice if they want to work on Fridays mm -hmm. during the summer to meet their hours. But we're sort of giving them permission, which I'm sure will lead into your encourage boundary setting as the last point. We're sort of giving them permission to say, listen, it's your choice, but we're going to tell our clients and also us as the leaders of the business are telling you, we're not going to call you on Friday. We're not going to message yep. you on Fridays. Like, so that's sort of like, if you would like to build your work week into Monday through Thursday, please feel free to do that. And like, take your kids to the beach on Friday, permission granted, no PTO, just like we're going to, yep make this just work. Yep. And I love that because again, it, it just shows the investment in the, the human, the person versus, oh, we're going to blanket something and maybe they like it and maybe they don't. And, and that's encouraging that boundary setting. Right. And that goes for, I know a lot of us struggle with this, especially if you're, you know, high performers, you're entrepreneurs, you're solopreneurs, you're, you know, that is, that is a very stressful space to be. Um, when you've got all of these clients coming at you, I'm sure you guys all had such a lovely week last week and there was <laughs> no one that was doing anything that was crossing any sort of time or, you know, commitment boundaries, but giving yourself that permission to say, you know what, it is seven o'clock at night. I am not answering that email. Christine, right. I loved when we were talking the other day and you said there are no accounting emergencies. There are no accounting emergencies, but like yep. if I can throw my two cents in there, it's just yeah. important that you communicate that with your clients, right? Like, sure. so, you know, we're going to tell all of our clients starting next month, just as an FYI, like we're we're closed on Fridays. We're a virtual office, but like, I'm not going to answer your email on Friday. So if there is something that you need urgently before the end of the week, you need to get in the habit of expecting that you're going to communicate that to me before Thursday. Sure. Otherwise I'm not going to get to it. 
We've also done a lot of work with our engagement letters, and I can throw that two cents in there too, you know, coming off the heels of tax season. We've done a lot to set expectations with our clients, and anyone on this call knows that there's always the client that ignores that boundary, but that's okay because the contract is in place for me to be able to say, you know, Susie, sorry to any Susie's on the call, but like Susie, our engagement letter was clear that we needed everything from you by X date. Um, we filed a courtesy extension for you, but we're not going to pick that work back up until after the deadline because we didn't receive everything in time. If you would like our help next year, you know, to get things in sooner, let's have a conversation after tax season ends about how to help you get that information to us sooner. Um, and just setting those boundaries with your clients as well helps you to like really feel empowered to just say, hey, listen, um, you know, these, this is important to us, you know, really being productive for you. Uh, we could probably do a whole session on boundaries, but we're at time. Yep. So I'm going to open it up for questions. And then I will also uh, put Michelle's contact information up here for you. So please feel free to reach out to her if you want any more information or her help. She is so phenomenal, you guys. I cannot say enough great things about working with her. Um, and that is it for today. So we will make sure that we get the recording out. You have the copy of the slides. And Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. You are just, um, have been such an incredible addition to our team. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to share your knowledge. Well, it's been great. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. And like you said, if there's any questions I could potentially help with, I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Awesome. Thank you. And I just will give one more really quick plug for Future Forward because there are a lot of sessions around technology efficiency, um, really driving a lot of your process and procedures with automation, AI, and technology. And that is going to really create an opportunity for some time savings, which makes it easier for us to implement some of these strategies as well. So make sure that that is on your calendar. All right. Well, thanks so much, Christine and Michelle. You know, I found myself going like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone also for taking some time out of your day to hang out with us. And right before we close out the webinar, remember that we have many webinars for you every month and you can check those out on our educational webinars page and watch out for Future Forward. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel and newsletter so you don't miss out on news and updates that impact today's accounting professional. Well, thanks for today, everyone, and we'll see you in the next Tax Talks. Bye.